last 24 hours. There's a lot of different genres going on here. And that's basically a reflection of the world now. Many years ago, 20, 30 years ago, genres, the population, especially in Australia, a lot of genres never survived because the audiences were too small. Now you've got this community of music lovers who love every genre of music. And I don't know whether you noticed, but when I was a, a kid, my brother and sisters never liked the bands I liked. And when my kids grow up, my son didn't like my daughter's bands. Well, today you go and see ACDC yeah. and there's the four-year-olds, yes. the 30-year-olds, the 60-year-olds and the 90-year-olds. And then you go down the road and you see Eminem or Justin Bieber and it's the same. Yeah. So it's an amazing thing. And I, I've seen four or five hours, so I'm really looking forward to getting out again tonight. But I've seen some great music here and the genres are really, really interesting. So, yeah. That's so interesting you said that because when I took my daughter to see Taylor Swift, there were probably, it was probably just as many adults, it was half adults, half kids. And it was really fun. I mean, it was, that's not something, you used to see, you know, so, pop mu music used to be, you know, that's the, for the kids, but no longer. No, a friend of mine came up to me a few months ago and he said, I need some Bob Dylan tickets. I want to take my eight-year-old and seven-year-old yeah. to their first concert. And I, I said, you're <laughs> subjecting those kids it's, to their it's, first ever concert being a Bob Dylan concert? Anyway, I saw him, I saw I him just mean, after just, the tour. I said, how did they go? He said, the seven-year-old fell asleep after six songs and the eight-year-old got to nine songs. <laughs> That's amazing. I guess, you know, my, my last question, because we have time for just one, uh, a couple of more minutes, but as they say, music can be the universal language of the world. How can music today be used as a tool through which to um, have people of different cultures understand one another and frankly do things and, and unify people in a way that, you know, governments cannot? How can music be used as an effective tool to kind of um, bridge cultural divides between people? I mean... Are you hopeful that it can? And it does, correct? I, I think it does. I mean, uh, in some ways. In some ways, it can also, you know, do the opposite. But, um, you know, um, those old protest songs were, I mean, yeah. but there aren't any Bob Dylans around right now. There aren't any Paul Simons around, uh, you know. I mean, there aren't any songs like Eva Destruction, or, you know, which was a, a classic. If, you remember that song? Um, they 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 don't exist. Um, I think that um, maybe we have it too good, even though it's not that great. I mean, uh, so many great war songs came out. I mean, I'm think it's a shame there was a war, but yeah. you know, they 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 kind of live live forever. I mean, music mirrors the times. You know, after World War One, uh, the, the soldiers that returned were able to go to college because they, they granted them. To, and a lot of college songs became number one hits, you know, uh, the Main Stein song, nothing to do with me. But, um, you know, was uh, Rudy Valley had hit after hit. You probably never heard of Rudy Valley, but I mean, y y you know, and then, uh, I mean, music is a mirror of the times. And um, I think that's something else you have to realize as well. Absolutely. Anything to add to that, Michael? Okay. No, he's got a pretty much. I mean, um, I was just in Thailand, my second home, and there's a young, uh, the, these uh, dozen Thai rappers got together and they done this song criticising the army that's the government at the moment and everything, but doing it very subtly. And uh, they'd had 600 streams when it hit the front page and the, uh, the Prime Minister was on the front page saying they're all going to jail. And then uh, the day I left to come here, the front page was, uh, there's nothing wrong with the song, it doesn't mention Thailand, and it's had 200 million streams. <laughs> on that note, thank you so much for being here and we're moving on to the next uh, segment.